Hi, this is lesson two of our Roots and Powers unit. We are converting between different types of radicals today. So we're converting between something called a mixed radical and an entire radical. Before we start doing that though, um, we want to review something called the multiplication property of radicals. And you can see that in the box that I'm highlighting right here. So there's a special property of radicals that we need to know, and that is if we are multiplying two separate radicals together and they can have totally different numbers underneath the square root symbol, we can actually combine those together under one square root symbol. So you can notice here we have square root of a times b. This does not work for adding or subtracting. It only works for multiplying. It actually works for dividing too. Um, but we're just going to look at the multiplying today. It does not work for adding or subtracting. It does work for multiplying. So just as a quick example to show you that it does work, if I was going to do the square root of 16 times the square root of 9, if I do those separately, the square root of 16 is 4 and the square root of 9 is 3, so the answer to that would be 12. And if I did the square root of 16 times 9 all under one square root, I would multiply the 16 and 9 together to get 144, and then the square root of 144 is 12. See how we get the same answer? So that works for any number. It doesn't have to be perfect squares under there. It could be any number. You can combine them together. So we're going to use that property today when we convert between mixed radicals and entire radicals. Okay, first we're going to be going from an entire radical to a mixed radical. And we're going to be doing that using prime factorization. So essentially we're going to be breaking up the number that's underneath the square root. And we are going to be... Um, sort of answering the part that we can answer and then leaving behind any parts that would give us a decimal. Um, so let me show you what I mean. Uh, okay, so the number 63, let's start by making a factor tree. 63 can be broken up into nine and seven and nine can be broken down into three and three. So this number is square root of 63. You could write this as the square root of three times three times seven, three times three times seven is 63. So we're, this is fair to do. Now, since we're doing a square root, what we wanna do is look for any pairs of numbers, groups of two, because those actually, so notice here three times three would be nine and nine is a perfect square that I can take the square root of and get a nice integer answer. So what I wanna do is separate any pairs and evaluate those. So watch what I do here. I'm going to separate out these threes. I'm going to leave the seven behind. And this part I'm going to be able to answer. So three times three is nine and the square root of nine is three. So I'm going to be able to answer that square root with a nice integer answer. And the square root seven, I'm not going to bother answering it because that is an irrational number that has many decimals that have no pattern. And so we're just going to leave it as three root seven. Now notice, I'm just gonna bring up my scientific calculator here. Actually, calculator, here we go. And I'm going to type square root of 63, which is what we started with. Oh, I have to press 63 and square root. There we go, you can see the decimal 7.937. And I'm gonna now type the square root of seven and times it by three, and we should get the same answer. Yep, 7.397. So they're the same number, um, just written in two different ways. So this is the mixed radical. And we started with an entire radical where the entire number was written under the square root. Okay, I'm gonna do one more and then I encourage you to do the last one on your own. This time we're gonna be doing a cube root. So instead of pairs of numbers, like we looked for in the first example, we're gonna look for groups of three numbers because we are doing a cube root, which is where we look for three numbers to multiply to make that number. Okay, so 2000, let's make our factor tree. Let's see what this is made of. I can divide it by 25. And actually I might as well even do, so 2000, divided by 25, it's 80. I like to divide as, by as large as numbers as I can because it makes my factor tree a little bit more even. But again, you can choose however you wanna make your factor tree. You'll get the same endings as me. 
and four is broken into two and two. Here's my factor tree, okay? So I've got uh, three fives. I've got four twos. Notice the coloring I'm choosing here. Okay, so let's write this out. So I have got cube root of 2,000, and I'm gonna break it up into triples, okay? So two times two times two, all those pink twos, I'm gonna put them together. And then I'm gonna put all these pink or yellow fives together. And then I have one lonely two left behind. <laughs> Thought I had in blue there. Okay, so I'm gonna answer the parts that have triples. Oops, sorry, I scrolled down a little bit too low. Okay, so I'm gonna break this up. So I'm gonna answer this part where I have triple twos because two times two times two is eight and the cube root of eight would be two. So I can answer that part with a nice number. By nice number, I just mean integer. I can answer that one, but I won't be able to answer this one nicely. So I'm just gonna leave it as cube root two, okay? So again, when you're doing a cube root, you're gonna look for triples. Okay, so here we have the cube root of eight, which is two. Then we have the cube root of 125, which is five. And then we have this cube root two. Very last step here, if you've answered multiple parts, you can just multiply them all together because everything is being multiplied here. So two times five would be 10. So we have 10 cube root two. That's our final answer, okay? And you can check with the calculator. If you do the 10 cube root two on your calculator, you should get the same decimal as this entire radical here. So again, just reminding you of the notation. This is called the entire radical and it should be numerically equal to the mixed radical. The mixed radical is just more simplified. The numbers are a lot smaller. Okay, and last one I encourage you to do on your own. You can pause the video here and then come back and check your answer. I'm gonna just do it really quickly as you do yours. Um, four, two, 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 four, two, two, two. So we end up with seven twos here. So I'm gonna pull out any groups of four this time. So last time we looked for triples, groups of three. This time because we're doing a fourth root, we're looking for groups of four. So I'm going to have my fourth root of 128 and I'm gonna pull out a group of four twos. Maybe I'll highlight those in yellow. One, two, three, four. And then I'll leave behind these guys in pink. Okay. Oops, that was not a four. There we go. Two, two, two. So looking for any groups of four, everything else we're gonna leave behind and not answer because it's not gonna give us a nice integer answer. So the fourth root of 16 here is two. And then we leave these three behind and it makes eight. Two times two times two is eight. And that's our final answer. So that would be the mixed radical there. And then up top would be the entire radical. Okay, now we're gonna practice going backwards. So we're gonna start with the mixed radical and then go backwards, change it back into an entire radical. So um, yeah, that's down below here. And again, I'll do the first two and then you can try the last one. Okay, we're starting with the square root. So we're starting with six multiplied with square root two. So what you wanna do is first start by writing the six as a square root. So you can multiply it twice because it's a square root. It's gonna be a pair underneath a square root. So notice this is exactly equal to six because this is square root 36, which is six, it's the same number. And then finally we'll put it underneath the same square root, okay? So I put it back underneath the square root, that number that was on the outside, and then combine these together. And we get square root 72. So this is the entire radical, and it's numerically equal, so you can check on your calculator, to the mixed radical at the start. Okay, let's try it with a cube root. When you put it when we do a cube root, we're just gonna convert this yellow number in front into a cube root instead of a square root. So when I convert it into a cube root, I'm gonna make it a triple. So 
So 2 times 2 times 2 this time. It is equal to 2. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. So I, didn't I haven't changed the number at all. I'm just writing it in a different way. I'm writing it as a cube root. And now finally, we're going to multiply these together. And we will have our entire radical. OK, you guys try the last one on your own. I will do it quickly here so you can check. So pause the video now, try it, and then come back. So this time when we're doing the fourth root, we're going to multiply that 10 four times to make it into a fourth root. And it is equal to 10. So we have the fourth root of 10,000 with four zeros there. And so that would be altogether 30,000. The fourth root of 30,000 is the same as 10 and then fourth root of three. Okay, that is the end of the lesson.